Hello everyone, in this video we're going to work together to find a general formula for the area of the oblique triangle using two of the side lengths and the angle between those two side lengths. So let's go ahead and start by drawing a picture of an oblique triangle. And so this is kind of similar to our derivation of the law of sines and that really there's kind of two arguments or pictures that we can draw here for an oblique triangle one with acute angles and one with an obtuse angle. The arguments are essentially the same and we get the exact same result either way. So we're just gonna draw our picture and make our argument for the uh, uh, oblique triangle with small angles, those acute angles all less than 90 degrees. And so the way we initially start solving basically all of these oblique triangle problems is by breaking it up into pieces where each of those individual pieces is a small right triangle. So using this perpendicular bisector or this vertical line coming down from angle B and attaching a side length B, we can now break our large oblique triangle into two smaller right triangles. Let's go ahead and say that common side length between our two right triangles is H, like the height of our triangle, and the two bases of our small right triangles are B1 and B2. And notice that B is gonna be equal to the sum of B1 and B2, right? Just add this B1 length to this B2 length, and we get our entire base length, that original blue quantity that we call B. All right, so from our very early geometry days, we should know that the area of a triangle is one half the, the base of the triangle times the height. And that formula was basically just for right triangles, or at least that's how you probably learned it in geometry but it's actually true for these non-right triangles depending on how we describe this quantity called the height. Let me clarify what I mean by that. So let's go ahead and apply this right triangle area formula to both of our interior smaller right triangles. All right, so both of these right triangles are gonna have a height of H and their bases are gonna be B1 and B2 respectively. So to get the total area of our triangle, we have to do one half the first base B1 times the height H and add to that the area of our second triangle, which is gonna be given by the expression one half B2 times H. Well, now what we can recognize is from these two terms, each term representing the area of one of our interior right triangles, we see that we have a common factor of one half times H. So if we factor out the common factor of one half H or H over two, we're left with in parentheses, the quantity B1 plus B2. But what do we notice about B1 and B2? they add up together to give us B. So B1 plus B2 is just our original B, and that's one half H times B, but the order of multiplication doesn't matter. And so I'm gonna write that as one half B times H. And so that's essentially the uh, original geometry formula for a triangle that you learned before, one half base times height. But now our height is just uh, described a little bit differently here for these oblique triangles. So next up, we're going to express this quantity H in terms of some of these known quantities like uh, side length C, side length B, side length A, and angles A, B, or C. In this small right triangle here, we can evaluate sine of our angle A. Remember for right triangles, our sine function can be interpreted as the ratio of the opposite side length to our angle to the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Well, for this right triangle, the side length opposite of our angle A is our quantity H or that interior height of our triangle and the hypotenuse is our side length of C. Well, from this, we can solve for H by multiplying both sides by C. And we see that H is equal to C times sine of A. We have one half times B times H, but H is equal to C times sine of A. And we get the first version of our area formula for an oblique triangle. It's one half B times C times sine of angle A. And the way I remember this area formula that also helps us generate the other versions of this area formula is it's always one half the product of two side lengths and then multiplied by sine of the angle that is not opposite of either of those side lengths. It's the, uh, the other letter that's missing, right? So you should always have an A, B, and C showing up. If B and C are our side lengths, then our angle is gonna be A 
if A and B are our side lengths, then C is our angle, and so on. So keeping that in mind, and essentially just by relabeling our picture, we can uh, rewrite this formula in a couple different ways. We can also write it as one half AB times sine of angle C, or we can write it as one half of AC times sine of angle B. So the area of an oblique triangle can be given by one half BC times sine of A, one half AB times sine of C, or one half AC times sine of B, or I prefer to think of it as one half the product of the two side lengths multiplied by sine of the angle between those two side lengths. We got a quick example here where we're going to try to find the area of a triangle. So we're told if a triangle has side lengths of 24 meters and 10 meters, with the angle between the side lengths being 62 degrees, then what is the area of that triangle? So we have two side lengths of 24 meters and 10 meters, and we're told the angle between those two side lengths is 62 degrees. With that information, we want to find the area of this triangle. And so notice this triangle wasn't labeled as like A, B, and C, so we can add that labeling ourselves. Let's go ahead and call this angle A, this angle B, and this angle C. Well, by our initial labeling, then this would make 24 the side length opposite of angle C and therefore side length C, and would make the side length of 10 our side length of B. It doesn't actually matter if we switch the roles of B and C here, we'll get the same answer in the end. And so the idea is we know two side lengths B and C as well as this angle A, and so we can use that and our newfound area formula to find the area of this oblique triangle. So remember the area is always one half the product of the two side lengths, so in this case B times C, times sine of the angle between those two side lengths. So at this point, it's basically just a plug and chug problem. We've set everything up. We've identified what B and C are. They're 10 and 24, and the angle between them is the sine value we have to take, that's sine of 62 degrees. So if we evaluate this expression using a calculator, and what we get out is a value of about 106. So that is the area here, and let's not forget our units. The units for the side lengths were meters, so our area is gonna have to be meters squared. So real quick and easy, we can find the area of an oblique triangle using our new formula. We just have to know two side lengths and the angle between those two side lengths.